to be uh, using critical thinking to s look at an issue, um, you have to ask questions. And uh, it's July 2017, so I think that it's appropriate to ask questions about the residential schools. And I'm going to ask a lot of questions that you don't want to answer, that you don't want to hear asked, because um, I like to bug people. So, when did they die? Uh, when did those kids die? The answer is, you know, late 19th century, early 20th century. And why is that important? Well, that's important because people died quite young back then. The infant mortality rate around that time was, uh, I think, 20%. Didn't make it uh, to the age of five. 20% of people didn't make it to the age of five. Um, so if you ask a question like that, what it does is it puts the whole thing in context. Uh, critical thinking always involves putting things in context because you don't you can't understand anything if you haven't put it in context. Critical thinking means looking at it, things from a different perspective. And critical thinking is dealing with one subject at a time. So if I ask when did they die and uh, what was, was the infant mortality or childhood mortality at that time, it's not the same as saying that I don't think what happened in the Catholic schools is horrible. Those are two different things. Um, and it would be, it's profoundly insulting to think that anybody who just wants to look at the situation from a little different perspective doesn't care. Uh, no. It, I personally just won't entertain that. The Catholic Church is guilty. Canada is guilty. We understand that it's a tragedy. But you have to look at it uh, at some point calmly and rationally so when did those kids die how did they die you have to ask what's the point of re-traumatizing people over this now because they admit that it's re-traumatizing so why would you re-traumatize re them are you re are you re-traumatizing them because you want to give them a sense of closure that might work or are you re-traumatizing them so you can uh, work as uh, an archaeologist to dig up the sites and make a bunch of money because you're going to be a lawyer, because you're going to be a psychologist, because you're going to be a journalist involved in essentially what's the Aboriginal industry? What, what exactly is your motivation for re-traumatizing those Aboriginal people? The Aboriginal people, I guess, are doing it themselves, but you know, they will tell you that they're being re-traumatized. So is it worth it, right? Just, is it worth it? Uh, another question, you probably won't like this. Um, did the Catholic schools abuse white kids? The whole notion is that Canada was racist, the Catholic schools were racist, that's why the kids are treating bad, because we're all racist. Uh, so... You did nobody even ask this? I haven't seen anybody ask this. Honestly, I haven't seen anyone. And I follow these things. Did they torture and abuse white kids? And the answer is, uh, in the 40s and 50s, they sure did. Um, it's a French school, D-U-P-L-E-S-S-I-S, -S -S, orphans. Duplessis, orphans, or something like that. Um, 20,000 of them were uh, stuck in orphanages and called mentally ill because if you had mentally ill kids to look after, you got more money. 20,000 in the 40s and 50s. So how many Aboriginal kids were there in the 40s and 50s? I don't know. And I doubt that uh, very many other people do either. I just don't know. And again, that's not to say that horrific things didn't happen. I know they happened because I've listened to hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of testimony from people who say that they were abused and tortured and neglected and all the rest of it. I know that, right? Um, but 
I guess the, the point of view that I take is that our goal is to reduce human suffering, right? And to uh, take any example of human suffering seriously. So you're going to ignore one group of people because of an ethnicity or a race um, and re-traumatize another group of people. Then someone has to come along and ask you, what are you doing? What are you doing this for? What, what do you even know about it? Um, were there abandoned graves at those Duplessis orphans, orphanages? Yes, dear, there were. There were their abandoned graves. 2010, they had to go to the United Nations to try and uh, dig them up. And I don't think they ever did. Uh, how about that? Uh, do you know whether or not in the Catholic schools it was only Aboriginal people killed there or buried there? Could have been from the other orphanages. I don't know. You don't know either because nobody talked to you about it. Nobody even mentioned it. Uh, how many of those um, what are now essentially abandoned grave sites uh, once had crosses? I don't know. You don't know. The Aboriginal people would know. We should ask them. Uh, during that period of time, there were Aboriginal kids who died off the uh, outside of the residential schools, where are their bodies? This is really tough, okay? You've got a bunch of people uh, admitting to guilt because there's uh, kids in unmarked graves. Where were the Aboriginal people's kids buried? Do you know the location? I don't know the location. And the point of this is that I haven't heard anybody ask. If you don't have people asking questions, you don't have any critical thinking going on. And if you don't have any critical thinking going on, you're headed for a disaster.